M0 FXP, let's load some custom firmware on the Mini SI4732 firmware by Golf 8 Papa Tango November M0 FXB, welcome back to my videos on the SI4732 mini receiver that you can see here. Now, big thanks to Omet, that's Paul, just watched his video installing some firmware. So please, I'll put the, the video in the description, check out, but this photograph here is from Paul's video where he shows the firmware installation and also some hardware that's been changed that adds the HIZ amplifier. But in this video, we're just gonna load the firmware for now. Now, I really like this device as it is, so I'm not saying you should do it, but there are some improvements and I made a small list of the improvements, which are, you can control the brightness. We get a signal meter. There's a blue banner on the top. You've got these two little dots that flash and there's battery voltage displayed. You've got a single press to activate the functions now instead of the annoying double press. You don't get that timeout as well because that was probably, I would say, the most annoying was the timeout. Um, and then you can, you've got this calibrate feature to fine tune. And also, you know, when you're tuning through and you get that hashy sound, uh, like it's almost muting when you're, especially on one kilohertz, uh, changing the frequency, well, that stops altogether. Uh, and then you get better fine tuning and there's auto volume control and more. So, you know, again, thanks loads, Paul. Um, really appreciate your video. Now, the firmware has been made by Dave, G8 Papa Tango November. So massive thanks to Dave, of course. And then the hard, the hardware, which is not in this video, is Oscar, Oscar Kilo 2 Bravo Uniform Hotel. And don't forget, this is the first version, uh, which is version 0.28. And all the GitHub links, links will be in the description. Uh, so let's, we're going to load it and uh, step by step. And again, I'll thank Paul again because I am following Paul's instructions step by step. So we have to thank Paul. So the first thing I did was I created two folders, one for the firmware file and one for the tool that loads the firmware. On the left hand side of the screen here, you're seeing the sort of flashing tool. So in the description, you'll see something that starts docs.espressive. So what we're going to do is download this flash tool, which is just here. I'm going to click this and I'm doing this live for the first time with you because you know me, I like to make videos as I learn. I'm not actually teaching. I'm doing in front of you uh, and then we learn together. So here goes. I'm going to click that. Wait for the, oh, it's just telling me it won't load it, but I'll get it to load. Okay, I turned off the virus detector and we've now got this one here and we're going to extract this to our folder that's called tools here. All you do is just go extract, find that folder in your list under desktop. Scroll down SI4 in the S's and there is their tool there and click OK and it's going to extract that. Now on the right hand side, you've got the version 28 firmware. See the green blob here? Click that and then go download zip. And then we're gonna click the zip and we're gonna do exactly the same thing, but we're gonna extract it to the one that I called firmware, just so it's easy to find really. Down you go, uh, where is it? Firmware, click okay. And so within those two folders now, we've got everything we need. It's all about getting prepared before you do it. So I'm just going to double click the folder to make sure it's there, which it is. That's the tool and double click the firmware one and it's there. Everything's there that we need. OK, turn on the device, plug in the USB cable at the top, right click here where you've got the Windows square. Go to device manager so you can find the port number. Double click port. Go down and mine is number 34. So we've got our com number. Now double click the folder where you've put the tool. And then double click again. And you're looking for this blue one here. Double click and let it run. Click more info and then run anyway and we get this window appear here okay it's quite small can we make it bigger 
Now we're going to do the first drop. It says here chip type, so drop down. Drop it and then choose the one that's ESP32S3. Leave develop and then change the load mode to USB and then click OK. You get this window up here. OK, and here we're going to be loading up the different firmware files that we need. So in this window, on the top section here, type 0 times 0 or 0 times 0, then 0 times 8,000 and underneath that 0 times 10,000. Then in these, these three spaces we need to fill. So we're going to, there's three dots here. Click the first one and go to the folder that we've got on the desktop, which is called the firmware. And we, we named it SI 4732 firmware. Double click, double click again and again. <laughs> and we're looking for the firmwares to appear now. So we've got all files. Okay, that was the wrong. I just want to make sure it's the right one. That's put the whole zip in. I might have to separate them. So in the end, I went to the bin files and I literally just clicked them and dragged them into a completely new folder here called bin. And I've got the partition, the bootloader and the actual bin. So they're all in there now. Let's reselect that top one and go to that file I called bin desktop. Go to bin. There you are. And then with the top one is the bootloader. So that's that one there. That's better. The second one is the partition. So you hit the three dots, hit the one that's called partition. And the third one is the actual bin file. Now we're going to click the third one and select bin this time. Just bin on its own. So to double check, you've got the bootloader at the top, partition and second one down, then bin. Now we just tick these three boxes here. We make sure that this is 40 here and the I, I didn't change that. And we select the COM port. Now the board rate is 115200. I am going to just check that mine is the same. Shouldn't have to, but right click device manager. So double click port now port and there it is there. COM34. I'm going to click it there. Right click properties port and look it's different i mean it might have worked anyway but i'm just going to make sure it's the same so 115 200 click ok and we can see it's com 34 we just choose that again com 34 and in theory we just now press start so we're going to hit start and you can see the device all connected go start and let it do its thing. So you can see it's gone off and it's running away. It looks like it's completed. So let's disconnect the radio and turn it off, then on. Press to reset EEPROM, it says press and hold but I haven't had to do it and yeah you can see now that that's completely gone in let's get an antenna on there and give it a test and we have to thank Paul for his instruction again and golf 8 papa tango november dave for the firmware okay so we've added our external speaker here flashing away in the background looks great the screen looks fantastic we've got a signal meter now battery with the voltage and got these lights flashing here so let's just um, push push this button we'll zoom in we've just added the custom firmware by golf 8 papa tango november that's dave um, so now we only have a one push function now we do have a bnc adapter here on my hf wire which is a 66 foot length of wire with a 49 to 1 ballon so if we just turn, you can see that I've set it to 100 kilohertz as we tune. But we can change that. We press it once and we can press it once for the volume. Press again, press it once. We can go up and down. We can change the step. Press, we've got a choice here. Let's do 50. 
I think we'll do larger for now, just so we can show it tuning. So press to step. There's no timeout anymore. And we'll go to 0.5k, that's 500. There's a few contests today. Let's just go a bit louder, press. Remember on the external speaker flashing away there. We can, if we want to fine tune that, we will just press, go to step, and go down to say 100, and as they call, we can fine tune, and go finer than that. We can also change the bandwidth, look, we're on 4.0k at the moment. Press, go to bandwidth, press, there you are, that sounds better, doesn't it? Press again, bandwidth, we've got mute, we've got AGC, soft mute, auto volume, adjust auto volume control, searching up and down, and then there's a calibration, we'll press that, and we should be able to see that fine tuning, and we cause through. works really well press again well, I think it's fantastic we turn it off turn it on press and hold if you want to reset but we're not going to reset let's let it boot up and remember that this is the first version which is version 028 Let's try a different band. We're going to press, go to a different band, go to. Let's try going down. As we go down, we see the band change. There's 20 meters. Then we've got the mode there. We'll press again. Go up one to mode, press. We're going to choose upper side band, press. And remember, these are 25 pounds. You can buy them with different color cases. That, that's booming in, isn't it? Let's do the calibrate. volume on my external speaker but you can plug in a bluetooth adapter and actually send this via bluetooth if i unplug it it'll let you see hear how loud it sounds bluetooth mode. we've got some stations bleeding across there Let's do the search. We'll just hit it and see what it does. Do that again. I haven't used it before. Seek up, seek down. I'm going to press. And maybe I'm doing something wrong there. Busy, isn't it? That's, I mean, obviously the internal speaker's tiny. You can't expect too much from that. And I don't think this big thing that I've got is probably the best choice. Um, There's probably one that's more ideal for the, you know, for the ohms that are coming out of this device. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Um, it's, you know, the new firmware. And I'll make another video of how you can return to the old firmware. Um, just so you know you can.
Bye for now. Thanks for watching my YouTube channel, 7-3.